Welcome everybody to Toys Bag Zen. Today we're going to be looking at the Wheeled Warriors Battle Base. I have two here. Some parts are better than others. We're going to select the best parts out of the two and make one. Sit back and enjoy. So I'm going to take these two battle bases, which have been disassembled, and we're going to pick the best parts out of them. But first, I've got to clean them. They're really dirty. As you can see, they mostly have all the stickers, but the stickers, some of them are in really bad shape. And some of the parts are have yellowed quite a bit so we want to discard as many of the yellowed items as possible and try to keep the best parts with the best stickers I do want to use all the original stickers and I'm not taking them off during the cleaning process and don't worry we'll be able to wash these parts without damaging the stickers we'll do less damage to the stickers that way anyway I am going to leave these platforms in because I haven't figured out how to take them out yet without damaging them. So I'm going to leave them on the playset to be cleaned at the same time. So here they are. Nice and clean. You notice that that one had a missing sticker. Vehicle exit ramps that have some broken pegs. We have to figure out which parts we want to keep, which ones we're going to fix. And uh, some of these parts also have broken tabs and some stress marks on them too. So here we go. We've got all the parts laid out in front of me, all cleaned, and I've picked all the best ones. So here you can see uh, the orange pieces. I've picked the ones that are not yellowed as much so that we can have match the orange. And then you can also see I've picked this one because it has the connection pieces there that are not broken. And then also have an example of the two platforms. One is a lot more yellow than the other, and it is damaged, and the stickers are not as good. But it has one good peg that you fit into the playset, where the other one has two pegs that are broken. Because of the damage of this one and the sun damage, I'm going to take the time to fix the pegs on the other one. It will take more time, but I think it's a better specimen. You can see on the other side, the color is actually pretty much the same. And here are the two pieces that are the front halves. The one on the right is the more yellow damaged one, but the hinge that connects the two halves together is still intact. So I'm kind of forced to take this one, although the stickers on this one is actually better than the other one. This vehicle loading ramp came off of the damaged half, and I pulled it off. I figured out how to get them off, and I put it on this one. It's in better condition. Okay, so let me show you how to take off and put on the exit or loading ramps. You can see on this ramp that there's little slits on the bottom. And so we can use that to our advantage. You just bend it upwards in upward motion. And then the two little pegs, they're so small they just pop out. Let's do the opposite. Let's get it, put it back in there. 
and that's how you do it. Another reason why I did not choose this half is because of the color of the damaged stickers and this has marker on the latch. So this piece here, it's, a, it's a easy to take off. At first I was afraid to take it off because I wasn't sure if it was supposed to come off for cleaning it. But then I realized actually it has two places you can peg this in. One here, and you just pull it off. It's a, it's a keyed part that just keys in. So you have two places you can put this towered gun. And it's telescopic too, so you can store it underneath this little door that fits around it. I also chose this one because of how nice and brilliant the colors are. And the other one was really yellow, so I kept this one. And here you can see I chose this one. Now this is supposed to be, this one says two, but it has the three sticker. I was going to take the sticker off, but actually I'm going to kind of leave it on there. So you put the gun in from the bottom, it just clicks in. And there's a, a perforated friction piece where it clips in that holds the guns. I chose this one over the other one, even though they looked exactly the same, but the perforated friction piece seemed to be more damaged on that one than this one. Uh, both of these covers, they were pretty much exactly the same. I picked the one that was the lightest in color. So here's platform number one. This piece just clips into the bottom of the platform. And this is number one, you can clearly see. Next, we're going to put in the tracks. Each half of the playset has a track because the playset opens up. So the track just goes in there. And then you can see the little tabs. Once you push it in far enough, it clicks into place. And there's also two wheels on the bottom of these tracks. Allows you to roll the playset. When the playset is open, you can use this kickstand to keep the playset half elevated off the ground so that it's level. Let's put the track on the other half of the playset. There is clearly a left and right track. You can see that uh, there's a part number on the inside of it. There's an L and there's an R. So if you buy these on the aftermarket, make sure you're getting the correct track. And like I said, there's two wheels on the bottom of the track. So make sure you're getting the wheels too. I can see how those tabs probably break off. And here we see 1985 Mattel. And look what I found here. See, this peg was stuck underneath that platform and I didn't know, I thought it was part of the part of the playset like that. That was just a stopper or something. This is the peg that was missing on the 
door one elevation lever. So perfect. I'll be able to fix the other one and then it'll be good for the other playset. So here we have the two halves. And we have the stabilizer legs here that holds it up level when you have the battle base open. So this piece here goes in only one way. You can't switch it around. And it's also taller on one side than on the other side. It's on, an, on like a, an angle. So it only goes in one way. You can't get it in the wrong way. I think this plastic is, you have to be careful with this plastic. I, I think that it's probably easy to crack. Next, we'll put the gun cover on. And I tried to put it in this way, but I found that it was easier to, if you turn it all the way up and slide it in upside down, the pegs go right into those slots easily and it just clicks right in. That's the best way to do it. I've tried it two or three different ways and I found that to just clicks right in. And then we can place the detachable gun turret right in here. That's where you can put a figure in there. Now these stickers get damaged from collapsing the gun together. And so I'm only gonna do this once <laughs> to show you guys how it works. I don't wanna put a lot of pressure on the playset. So I'm gonna take it off and show you how to get it to go in. You see it's got these tabs that go in and you can see where one of the stickers have gotten damaged already so I'm going to do this once and then once it's done I'm going to pull it out put it on display and never do it again because I'm sure those stickers will just get damaged more and more and there the gun kind of sits in there and you put the top on it and it's hidden away Next, we're going to be putting the exit ramps on. I'm going to show you how to do that here. I bend it up. If you bend it down, it doesn't work as well. You bend it up and they just go in. And those pins are very small, so... When I make new ones, I'm going to try to make them so they're a little bit more sturdier. I put in the vehicle launching ramp, which is connected to the vehicle loading ramp number one, which actually fits into the vehicle repair center. And yes, I know the sticker says two, but it is one. So first we have to put this little switch piece in through the wall you just clip it into place with the two pegs and you can use the switch to stabilize the ramp the switch has a couple functions one is to uh, lift the ramp up when it's closed and also to launch the vehicle off the exit ramp and I can see how using that switch to hold the door up there's a little bit of stress on that where it pegs in and you can see how the other one probably broke and here you can see the difference in the lengths of door one and door two 
even if you don't know where the doors go, you don't have the instructions, you can clearly see that the number one door is longer than the other, and that's a good starting point. So far, so good. Let's get this door, and this is the one without the pegs. It still fits in there. I'm just going to put it on for now. We're going to fix those connection pegs. And here's a little door that you can have a figure stand in, and he gets access to the laser gun. Next, we're going to take a look at the control deck. Mine has a little damage there, but uh, that will be hidden once it's put in, mostly. Here you can see the sawtooth triangular pieces. And you just fit those tabs in there. These pieces allow you to move the control deck up and down. There is a lot of computer detail in there, switches, displays, and you can move it up and down and it has two seats for your figures. On this half of the playset, on the inside you can see vehicle loading ramp number four clearly marked on the bottom of the ramp. And this is a another control panel of some sort. I'm not sure where this goes. I haven't seen any pictures of anywhere where it goes. So I'm just going to peg it probably in one of these pegs if I can shut the door. There are two pieces I'm missing from this playset. It's the gun rack. This might be part of the gun rack, maybe. And I'm also missing the detachable brain cage. So I think I'm going to just leave it there. And it fits underneath the door. It pegs right in there. There's two holes to peg things in there, and it's probably for lasers, but I'm just going to leave it there. Now let's take a look at the pivoting repair crane. You can see there's a stress mark on it, but the other one was worse, so I chose this one. And that just fits right into there. And this is movable. You can move it up and down, depending on how high you want it. If you had a vehicle in there, you can unload things from the vehicle. And also you can see there's a little ball on, on the grabbers and that allows you to put it in a position and it will stay there without it sliding back and forth. It comes with a whole bunch of weapons that you can peg in all around the playset. And as I'm doing this, I've realized that the weapons have two different size pegs that fit into this playset. I'll show you here in a minute. I'm just trying to figure out uh, some of the best places to put these weapons. So it's a, it's a battle base, but it's also considered a fortress. It says that on the box. So we're essentially done with the inside. So I'm just going to pull the kickstands up. They just fold inside 
each half. And I'm going to latch this together. Here's a picture of the back of the box. All right, let's peg these in and see where they can fit. Let's customize it. This is the coolest part of this playset, I think, is you can peg the weapons wherever you want. This is where I figured out that the long pegged weapons do not fit into the playset. Now the short pegged weapons, they do not peg on the inside of the playset, only the outside. You can see the difference in the size of the pegs there. Again, I'm trying to put a long peg <laughs> in there and it doesn't fit at all. Where it does fit is on these platforms for the figures. The short ones do not fit in the platforms, but the long ones do so be aware of that when you're trying to find parts for this thing uh, the little platforms for the figures are cool but if you only have short pegged uh, weapons they will not fit into the platforms This is like a oxygen tank of some sort. Doesn't look like a weapon really. I wanted to put that on the inside, but like I said, it, they don't peg on the inside very well. One of the long pegged uh, weapons can fit into this weapon, so you can combine two weapons. It's kind of cool. Okay, so now let's finish this sticker damage here. Let's glue it down at least with some acid free glue stick.
That's better. Now we're going to fix the tabs on the ramp. So I'm gonna use a Lego antenna. And I was looking at this piece here. It is in gray. The antennas I have are black. I think this plastic will be too thick. It'll take me longer to shape it. First, I'm going to cut out some notches out of the ramp so we have more area to glue to. trying to make our cuts 90 degrees and flush. I'll take my X-Acto knife and true those up a little bit. Flatten everything out. And there's my Lego piece that I'm gonna use. Just gonna flatten the round edge so that it goes in there flat side on flat side. Yeah, like that. I think that'll work just fine. I have a couple options I can use. I can use this Gorilla Glue, which is like a crazy glue. I can use this Bondic. And this Plastruct Plastic Weld. Uh, I just got this from uh, Amazon. I'm gonna try it out. It's a plastic weld liquid. And uh, you put it on and it fuses the plastic. It actually melts the plastic, two pieces of plastic, and fuses it together. And I, I read some reviews on this stuff and they said it didn't work very well, but w one review said you need to shake it. So I'm going to try this out and see what happens. Sometimes this stuff works really well where you don't want to use glue or where you're trying to bond two things and you don't want to deal with the mess. Crazy glue is kind of messy. So you put a little bit on each piece. You're supposed to put the pieces together, apply a little pressure for about 15 seconds, and then I use the brush applicator that came with it to put more around the parts that are touching each other. So there's the two parts I've used. The thick part of the antenna and the thin part. The thin part will be mostly the, the peg that goes into the playset. I'm gonna let that sit for 24 hours. And this is what we have. I've done a little bit of shaping, but we have a little bit more shaping to do. I'm gonna use some files and in, in, in my X-Acto knife and I will shape the two pieces 
and try to make it look like the original piece. If you look there, you can see it. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy with those results. It looks really close to the original piece. I'm just gonna sand it just to finalize the, the look to it and then we're gonna color match it with some paint. So here I have some Vallejo paints. I'm using black, a dark yellow, white, and a little bit of brown. And uh, I'm not really, uh, I don't have a lot of experience paint matching when I'm doing this kind of stuff. So it usually takes me a long time, but I've learned to use just a little bit of paint instead of a lot of paint. You just do a little bit of paint here and there, keep mixing it, keep checking it, keep mixing it, keep checking it. I don't need a lot of paint anyways. The Those pins that I've made are not very big. But this plastic is not really, it used to be like a gray, but it's got a little bit of, little bit of yellow in it from age and some brown in it from, you know, being yellowed from the sun wherever this was stored. So I'm hoping that these paints will give me the result I'm looking for.
Yeah, I think that paint looks good. It's a really good match. I know it'll probably dry darker. So it may be a little off, but I think it'll be close enough that you'll have to look really hard to find the repair. And those tabs are going to be inside the play set a little bit anyway. So I think that's that's going to be awesome. Once the paint is dry, once I'm done applying the paint and it's dry, we'll put it into the playset and see how it works. All right, so let's put this in. Remember, we have to bend it upwards so that those pegs fit in there. Let's see if it works. There we go. It works great. So now let's take a look at the Lightning League figures. They're all pretty much the same except they have different colored hair. We have orange hair, and they come in blonde, brown, and black hair. The Monster Mine Brain figures. They've got some really cool detail. If you look really closely, even in the back, there's detail. It's Pretty cool. Looks like there's like a switch there or something. It's pretty interesting. You can fit him in the turret, in the platforms, control deck. Now there's supposed to be a jail here for the brains, but uh, I don't have that, so that doesn't work very well, does it? <laughs> I really love this playset. It has a lot of play features. But it has a lot of cool play features. I think it's really fun. And those weapons that have the long pegs they fit into the vehicles. There's the handle there. You can see you can clearly lift it. It's pretty sturdy and the wheels turn very well. The wheels were kind of stuck in there with dirt and stuff. Once I cleaned them out, now they're, they're rolling really well. So you can see the playset. I think it's a fantastic playset. I love it. I can't wait to put it on my shelf. Thanks for watching. This is Toys Bag Zen. Please leave a comment, subscribe, and like this video. Thanks.